To set up quizzes, we're going to go to activities. Select quizzes in the drop down menu. And if you don't plan on having more than one category, you don't necessarily need to worry about this. But I, I want to separate out my weekly quizzes versus my semester tests. All right. Save. I'm going to add another category and call this semester tests. Okay. Save and close. All right. Now we don't see them, but they are there. Let's go up and create a new quiz. Let's just call this week one quiz. All right. Now this is where our categories will show up. Weekly quizzes. This will help keep us keep everything organized. All right, this quiz is empty. So that's telling us we haven't added any questions yet. Now, when we're in here for the week one quiz, we can um, import questions. And there are, for this example, I'm just going to show you how to generate your questions from scratch. So we're going to start with new. And let's start with a true false question. All right, true or false. Is the sky blue? And we would select the correct answer and then save. And this, you could just continue on down the list here. This here is a multiple choice question. Um, what is my favorite color? And hopefully you discussed this in class time or told them in maybe the syllabus. Maybe this is part of a syllabus quiz. Okay. And you can obviously add more answers and you can randomize them for each individual student. So the correct answer to that in this example would be blue save so now we have two questions and we are done editing questions for right now now questions per page this is kind of a weird feature of Brightspace let's say if you have a 50 question test you might break it in half so 25 questions per page so it's not too much for the students to stroll through but you certainly don't want to do one question per page because that really puts a tax on download because each page has to be downloaded. Okay, so if you enter a number there and hit apply, the next time you come in here, it won't show that. Okay, uh, prevent moving backwards through pages. Uh, that's entirely up to you. If you think maybe uh, you want to give the students a chance to re-examine how they answer questions before they hit submit you would not check this but if you wanted to stop them from moving back and forth you can certainly do that also shuffle questions at the quiz level and now i'm going to go up to restrictions and this is where you will set your dates and the default is inactive so i'm going to select active has a due date let's just say this starts today start date it's going to start it a week before this by default end date it's just going to match that one there and i do want to display this in the calendar so the students will get that notification 48 hours in advance all right release conditions we will talk about those in a later video and they have a recommended time limit which is 120 minutes by default and it essentially gives them an unlimited time limit up to the end date if you have like a grace period like it's not it's due one day but it ends the next it will flag it but still allow the kids to or the students to continue working all right and also if you have accommodations that come down from the disability offices 
this is where you would give the students special access and you could set it up to where they would have more time to take the quiz or outside of the, the, the times for the quiz. All right. Assessment. And because this is a multiple choice and true and false, I'm going to allow this attempt to be set graded immediately upon completion. Now, if you're doing short answer or fill in the blank, if the answer does not exactly match what you have entered into Brightspace in the, the question library, Brightspace will mark it wrong and you will have to come back and change that grade, you know, regrade it to make sure that you're, you know, it's a fair grade. Otherwise, for multiple full, uh, multiple choice and true and false, um, it's just automatically going to be done and they'll immediately get that feedback. And I have created a grade item for this already. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to automatically allow the export to grades because I don't plan on having to go back and regrade these quizzes. Uh, I'm going to allow my students one attempt on this and obviously you can give them as many as you want. And I'm going to do the highest attempt, but you can also do uh, an average of all attempts if you want to, or whatever option you so choose. All right. We're going to, and also, this is a, a good thing to look at. Objectives, I'm not too worried about. Submission views. Now, the default is it just gives the students their grade and what they got. Now, if you want them to see the questions they got wrong or the questions they got right, or none of the questions uh, you can change the views by going into the additional add additional view so that's entirely up to you what you want to be able to have your students see all right and this is um, you go down here and these are your options for what you want your students to see okay so with that I'm just gonna go with the default and hit save. Oh, let's cancel out of this. All right. And save and close. I am all done setting up this quiz. I see a due date. It's going to be available for the students to start working on it on July 17th. And it will end on July 24th at 3.46 p.m. All right. If you have any further questions about setting up quizzes, Please contact Caleb or I. We're in the basement of Cowan Hall, room 110. Thank you.